Hi, everyone. My name is Muna Oladipo, and I, like some of you here today, recently started a new job about six months ago. So when asked to speak at Women in Product, uh, the conference, I could not think of a more timely topic than understanding how to navigate the job search and starting a new role in this new world we live in. My hope is that you can make some of my own takeaways your own uh, as you start to consider or start a new role. So taking a few steps back, I remember when I was thinking, you know, and then accepting my previous role at Kickstarter, I went through all the old normal things, you know, I asked, uh, you know, what was going to be needed in this role. Um, I considered whether my skills would be transferable in a way that would allow me to provide value. I also had to consider how to juggle going into the office for interviews while focusing on still fulfilling my full-time role. So once I accepted, it was, what was I going to wear on my first day of work? How was I going to get commute in? Um, times I would need to leave work or get into work for my different commitments. Then once I was in the office, I would walk around trying to make awkward eye contact with folks and hang out in the kitchen to hopefully strike up some convo. I didn't spend too much time thinking ahead about how I actually needed to interact. I let the moments sort of come naturally. Um, I just focused on making the space for those interactions to happen. Then if issues bubbled up, we would hop into a conference room, we would whiteboard or discuss. It was, it was nice. Um, but then last year, as I stuck my head out to consider a new role, I realized that while I'd spent a lot of time understanding how to lead in this new environment, I wasn't quite sure how to interview and make this thing happen. So I quickly found myself fatigued um, as I sat in meetings all day at work and then tacked on virtual meetings at the end of the day to accommodate interviews. Um, I was finding that I was having to share more about my personal life as I worked around scheduling and that I was going to really you know, have to think about how to exist in this new normal. I thought about how to authentically connect with a person remotely. How do you get them to focus on you and not any Slack messages or any items popping up on their screen? So to help with understanding you know, what roles to consider and why, as well as how to build that right rapport with the person I would be speaking with, I developed a set of principles to help keep in mind for myself you know, how I was... Um, approaching job hunting, because uh, I was already stretched through the workday. I need to be more discerning about how I was spending my time. So my principles were that I wanted to work with ambitious and focused people. I wanted to have a space where I could continuously learn. I wanted a place where I knew I could have positive impact and for myself, just having balance. Knowing these principles, I would evaluate after initial call if it made sense to continue the conversation. And if I then had more targeted questions that I could ask up front. Uh, I accepted my role at Shopify, and now I was in. I had to figure out how to now thrive. Of course, there was a normal onboarding, but really it's about you and your now re remote workspace to develop a strategy for success. So the first thing I personally focused on was communication. Uh, on the notes that I was feeling like I need to share more than I would normally, it was it was very real for me. I found myself needing to talk about school pickup schedules, planned deliveries, or home repairs. Uh, if there were internet issues, excuse me, if there were internet issues, um, you know, how to figure out a stable hotspot. Pre-COVID, I like to tuck all those things in uh, because most of the items, I didn't feel like they were real factors in me delivering on my job. Now, I've come to realization that it's important for me to communicate early and often because in this new normal, a lot of us are working from home and we truly can't reschedule, you know, whatever it may be, or we, we can't control the internet gods. So this added stress of pretending like we had control of everything just wasn't worth it for me. So by communicating any restrictions, obligations, or known issues up front, I felt like more people around me also were more open and willing to share their own limitations or challenges for the day. So alongside communication here, asking for what you need was an important part for me. I noticed little differences where, you know, when you first join a company or in the office and someone is heading to a meeting, they can scoop you up and ask you to come join. Uh, now, a person has to remember to add you to a meeting, which has likely been taking place for a long, you know, for however long. So you're having to nag people to join, telling people you'd love to join if certain types of meetings take place or just directly asking to be added to specific meetings. This was critical for me. I wasn't comfortable at first, but I just put myself out there and kept asking. And eventually what happened was as things popped up, people just started naturally thinking, hey, we should just add Pamuna to this thing. 
Similar to communication, I found myself in this company where I had been introduced via Slack and went through this lovely onboarding program. I had a buddy, they had made them intros, um, but it's really nothing like walking around the office. You know, I had known about, you know, relationships, but now you really think about establishing relationships, which for me is key because I didn't want the first time I was working with someone to be us working through an issue. Um, so I needed to develop that trust early on. So I set out on that journey and I'm still on it, to be honest, you know, in that first week I made a list of about 10 people uh, that I had recommendations through my manager and folks around me that I would have virtual coffees with. In these coffees, I'd ask, you know, where they're based, how long they'd been with the company, some tips and tricks they had picked up along the way, what they like to do for fun, um, types of problems that they solve for and where they consider themselves experts. And then most importantly, I would ask uh, for the name of two to three people they would recommend I meet and why. That last question was critical because I would ask that person then if they were comfortable making an intro for me to that person. Um, and I found myself doing something around 20 virtual copies a week and they were all very useful. You know, in those conversations, not only did I feel like I was organically bumping into someone, but I was also learning great company context that I wouldn't have gained via Slack or another method. So, you know, every two to three weeks, I would check in with folks that I previously met. Um, I'd just say hello or reference something we had discussed. Of course, it's not better than bumping into a person in the hallway, but it works really well. And now I make sure to continue those virtual copies with new folks, as well as keeping up with the people I have spoken with in the past. So, Another consideration here is in the same way you're getting to know others, you need to spend time deliberately connecting and letting others connect or get to know you. So in a same remote environment, you know, we can't see social cues. You can't see when someone's uncomfortable, nor can someone see when you're uncomfortable. So establishing those boundaries while understanding what you, you want to share about yourself is important. I'm not naturally a sharer, uh, but I understand the need to open up so folks can get to know me. Uh, so, you know, I take time to think about things over my weekend or generally in my life that I want people to know about me. Um, I also find it important to understand, you know, in different settings, how best to promote myself. So thinking about, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations, small team meetings, um, org wide meetings, my messaging is always slightly tweaked, uh, for those different settings, depending on what it is I want to convey in one-on-ones. I want there to be a lot of conversation and questions. I want to form deeper connections. So it's 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 there's more information that I'm sharing. In smaller team meetings, you know, I'm trying to establish that voice and presence in the room, letting people know why I exist and you know what I want to accomplish, what they can come to me for. And those larger org meetings, you know, there really isn't enough time to really dive into your personal. So I'm setting the stage for folks to reach out for me, reach out to me with questions, not really diving too deep in a specific area. You know, I found that a little bit of mindfulness here goes a very long way for how you can connect with your team meaningfully. And then the next one, <laughs> which uh, again, for me is important, you know, as we move through our careers, the breadth and depth of what we need to know is constantly changing. So something I intentionally thought about upfront was how do I learn best and how can I set myself up for success? So with being remote, there are so many threads we can pull and lose track of what we really need to know to get feel like we're up to speed. So many docs, so many slacks. So myself, I know I learn best in conversation. So aggregating a ton of Google Docs would not be the best way for me to get up to speed. So what I did was I leveraged my virtual coffees to figure out who knew what and you know how to ask them for whatever it may be or who could point me in a direction. So those conversations I would have with individuals, I would just continue to dig out information, which is super helpful. So you want to be upfront about like, your intention setting here to understand how you can best set yourself up for success. And then establishing those early wins and getting that alignment. So, you know, I'm sure we would all agree with the statement, but I'm going to say it anyway. Building relationships remotely is hard and a foundation here really helps with that trust so when you have that trust, you can have those authentic conversations to understand and align or any, around any wins and goals. So with my manager, uh, you know, I started way before I started at Shopify, really being my authentic self, sharing more openly than I would have in the past. I found that I thought I was oversharing, but 
really, when I think I'm oversharing, I think I'm actually probably just sharing just enough, if even that. So as I came into my new role, I thought about for myself, you know, what would be a good win for me? When I established that, I then went to my manager and asked, you know, talk to me about the landscape. You know, where do you see opportunities and really understanding to see if there were any expectations that I did not know of or that I should know of. Then we openly just talked about, you know, together where we saw alignments and opportunities for me to define my success early on. Once I had that set, developed those early set of goals, and then I just started to work towards that. So I focused, focused really on having that early win. Um, because oftentimes when you start that new role, you can get lost, uh, because you're sort of chasing different threads. You're unsure of progress or how to measure success there. So it's easy to get sucked into that day to day and lose sight of that, that success point there. So by anchoring against the thing, you know, you can have those conversations and pull the right people forward with you to help hit that objective. So in summary, I hope, um, you know, you're able to take some of my learnings and apply them to your own journey. Developing your principles by evaluating your current and past situation is an extremely helpful way to help frame your priorities. You know, once you have your principles, you can develop those targeted questions that can help you quickly get to the root of a company so you can understand alignment. Then once you're in, you are now ready to start that journey. You want to just start ruthlessly communicating what you need to be successful. You want to build those strategic relationships around your teams and those around you. You want to share what you are comfortable sharing so that folks can connect with you in authentic ways beyond just the screen we're in. Um, as you're promoting yourself, don't forget, you know, you're there for impact. And so understand what you need to do and how success will be measured. Get that early win to get the ball rolling for yourself. Best of luck in your journey. Thank you.